Hey guys, so welcome back to the STEM Guild. Today we're going to be doing something a little different than what I've done before. So today I'm basically going to go over a laboratory session that we did at university. I think this would be a great opportunity to let people who don't do engineering or who are interested in engineering to know more of the practical side of chemical engineering. So without further ado, let's get straight into it then. Okay, so within this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to find out the liquid phase sonification of sodium hydroxide with an ether. Basically, what this means is the alkyne hydrolysis of a fatty acid ester. So, what this reaction consists of is an acetic ether with sodium hydroxide and this turns into ethanol and sodium acetate. So this happens because the ether molecules disintegrate and are split into acetate ion and an ethanol molecule as we can see right here. This is why the rate of reaction is tracked by the hydroxide concentration or we could do this by the measurement of conductivity. So you're probably thinking how would we measure the rate of reaction? That can be easily done through reactors. So basically the rate of reaction can be defined as the speed at which the reactants get used up or the speed at which the product is formed over unit time. And that's basically what we're trying to find out within this experiment. The rate of reaction of the chemical solution and how fast it is. And we're going to do this by comparing two different kinds of reactors. This would be the CSTR reactor and the plug flow reactor. So basically the CSTR reactor is very self-explanatory. Um, the name says it all. It stands for a continuous stirred tank reactor. And it's basically this big tank which constantly keeps on stirring, as you can see right here. It is usually run at a very steady state to make sure all of the solution is well mixed. So in comparison to this, the plug flow reactor is an ideal tubular reactor with laminar flow. So that would mean the reactants was passed through the tube and are converted progressively along the line of the reactor. So now that we know a little bit about both of the reactors, we should also know the objectives of the reaction. Objectives are a very crucial part of the experiment. The objective is why we do the experiment and the objectives also help us to find out what we're trying to find within the experiment. We always refer to our objective when looking at the conclusion or discussion. So the objectives are the same for the CSTR reactor as well as the plug flow reactor. And we have three objectives to look at. The first objective would be to look at the liquid phase sonification within both of the reactors. This would just basically mean that we look at the reaction and how it happens in the reactor and kind of study it and get a gauge of what's going on. Secondly, we should look at the retention time and the temperature for the reaction. And finally, number three, to determine the reaction rate constant of the experiment. So the next thing we're going to look at is the equipment. So we didn't really use a lot of equipment in this experiment. The equipment that we used was, first of all, the CE301 trainer. And here we have the equipment in the lab. Obviously, it's not on industrial size. And here it is turned on. And here we have to the right, we have at the top, we measure the conductivity. At the bottom, we measure the temperature. Here, these two knobs um, represent the flow rate in both of the pumps. And that was connected to either the CSTR reactor and the plug flow reactor. Um, the, CE, the CE310 trainer basically enables us to calculate the conductivity and the temperature of the reaction. So we can see then the rate of reaction by the time it takes for the reaction to occur. Also, obviously, the other pieces of equipment are the two reactors, the CSTR reactor and the plug flow reactor that we just discussed. Also, we need um, 800 milliliters of 2.3% sodium hydroxide. So 400 milliliters would be used for the first part of the experiment with the CSTR reactor and 400 milliliters would be needed for the second part of the experiment for the plug flow reactor. We would also, again, need 800 milliliters of 5% ethyl acetate. Again, it's halved between the first reaction and the second part of the reaction. And glass beakers just to put all the solutions in. 
So basically what would happen was the two chemicals would mix and then they would go into that reactor and flow over there. We would also monitor the reaction and this is when you stick the probe into it and actually take the readings inside. Then these are attached to two of these pipes and when you would turn that switch you will get the temperature of the reaction and this, this switch just turns the system on or off. Those two knobs over there would control the flow rate of the two chemical pumps which would be 40% um, and 80%. So on to the method. Again, as with all this experiment that we've discussed, the method is basically split into two parts, but it's exactly the same for the CSTR reactor and then the plug flow reactor. So we're doing it in terms of the CSTR reactor first. So the first thing you would do is to connect the CE310 trainer to the CSTR reactor. So after that, you would connect the correct water hoses and chemical hoses from the pump to the tank. You would write down the temperature, the initial temperature and the initial conductivity for both the ethyl acetate and the sodium hydroxide. So make sure you do that first before starting the experiment so we can see what happens. Then 400 milliliters of 2.3% um, of sodium hydroxide was prepared within a glass beaker and the conductivity and temperature was measured using a measuring sensor. The same was done with the 5% ethyl acetate solution. Then the rapid action connectors were used to connect the correct chemical hoses from the pump to the tank. Then you insert the conductivity measuring sensor in the measuring opening on the lid and then connect the stirrer. The overflow of the tank is then adjusted so that the measuring sensor is immersed approximately 50 millimeters into the liquid with the tank filled. Then you have to ensure that all the subordinate switches on the CE310 main unit area are switched off and then you switch on the unit at the master switch. The required temperature for the heating regular is 45 degrees so you switch that and you turn on the heater. Now what we basically did for the CSTR and the PFR is we had four different things that we were measuring. So first we measured the experiment at 80% flow rate with the heater off. Then we measured it 80% flow rate with the heater on. Then we measured it at 40% flow rate with the heater on and 40% flow rate with the heater off. Now, what we did was we measured the conductivity at 30 second intervals and also the reaction temperature. It was logged for 30 seconds. Um, at all of them and we did the same for the PFR and all the equipment at the end was turned off and made sure that everything nothing was on and everything was correct okay so here are my results the overall trend that we can see from this is that when the heater is on the temperature is naturally higher but the rate of conversion ratio is also higher However, during the times when the heater is off, the conductivity of the reaction is higher. The same trend can be seen for both CSTR and PFR, and it can also be seen within the different flow rates 40% and 80% respectively. A reason for this can be, as the temperature increases, the subsequent particles gain more energy, and there is a higher chance of collision. Also, the activation energy would get lower, and the overall reaction would happen a lot quicker. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of an insight on what goes on in the life of an engineer, which is the whole point of this channel. I found it really interesting doing this experiment and I hope you do too. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about the experiment, about different types of reactors, rate of reaction, which is very much a common theme within chemical engineering and you'd come across it a lot. For now, thanks so much for watching. Love ya!